Part One of Philoctetes. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Philoctetes by Sophocles. Translated by Lewis Campbell, eighteen thirty to nineteen o eight. Part One. Philoctetes, the Persons odysseus neoptolemus chorus of mariners philoctetes messenger disguised as a merchantman heracles appearing from the sky scene a desert shore of the island of lemnos it was fated that troy should be taken by neoptolemus the son of achilles assisted by the bow of heracles in the hands of philoctetes now philoctetes had been rejected by the army because of a trouble in his foot which made his presence with them insufferable and had been cast away by odysseus on the island of lemnos but when the decree of fate was revealed by prophecy odysseus undertook to bring philoctetes back and took with him neoptolemus whose ambition could only be gratified through the return of philoctetes with his bow philoctetes was resolutely set against returning and at the opening of the drama neoptolemus is persuaded by odysseus to take him with guile but when philoctetes appears the youth's ingenuous nature is so wrought upon through pity and remorse that his sympathy and native truthfulness at length overcome his ambition when the inward sacrifice is complete heracles appears from heaven and by a few words changes the mind of philoctetes so that all ends well philoctetes odysseus neoptolemus odysseus this coast of sea-girt lemnos where we stand is uninhabited untrodden of men and here o noblest son of noblest sire achilles born neoptolemus i erewhile ordered by those who had command cast forth trachinian philoctetes poeus son his foot dark dripping with a rankling wound when with wild cries that frighted holy rest filling the camp he troubled every right that none might handle sacrifice or pour wine offering but his noise disturbed our peace but why these words no moment this for talk lest he discern my coming and i lose the scheme wherewith i think to catch him soon now most behooves thy service to explore this headland for a cave with double mouth whose perforated structure in cold days gives choice of sunshine and in summer noons the breeze wafts slumber through the airy cell then something lower down upon the left unless tis dried thine eye may notice spring go near now silently and make me know if still he persevere and hold this spot or have roamed elsewhere that informed of this i may proceed with what remains to say and we may act in concert neoptolemus lord odysseus thy foremost errand will not task me far methinks i see the cave whereof thou speakest odysseus where let me see it above there or below neoptolemus yonder above and yet i hear no tread neoptolemus climbs up to the cave odysseus look if he be not lodged in slumber there neoptolemus i find no inmate but an empty room odysseus what no provision for a dwelling-place neoptolemus a bed of leaves for some one harbouring here odysseus naught else beneath the roof is all forlorn neoptolemus a cup of wood some untaught craftsman's skill and close at hand these embers of a fire odysseus that store is his i read the token clear neoptolemus oh and these festering rags give evidence steeped as with dressing some malignant sore odysseus the man inhabits here i know it now and sure he's not far off how can he range whose limb drags heavy with an ancient harm but he's gone either to bring forage home or where he hath found some plant of healing power send therefore thine attendant to look forth lest unawares he find me all our hosts were not so fair a prize for him as i neoptolemus my man is going and shall watch the path 
what more dost thou require of me speak on odysseus son of achilles know that thou art come to serve us nobly not with strength alone but faithful to thy mission if so be to do things strange unwanted to thine ear neoptolemus what dost thou bid me odysseus tis thy duty now to entrap the mind of poeas son with words when he shall ask thee who and whence thou art declare thy name and father tis not that i charge thee to conceal but for thy voyage tis homeward leaving the achaean host with perfect hatred hating them because they who had drawn thee with strong prayers from home their hope for taking troy allowed thee not thy just demand to have thy father's arms but ere thy coming wrongly gave them o'er unto odysseus and on this launch forth with boundless execration against me that will not pain me but if thou reject this counsel thou wilt trouble all our host since if his bow shall not be ta'en thy life will ne'er be crowned through troy's discomfiture now let me show why thine approach to him is safe and hopeful as mine cannot be thou didst sail forth not to redeem thine oath nor by constraint nor with the foremost band all which reproaches i must bear and he but seeing me while master of his bow will slay me and my ruin will be thine this point then craves our cunning to acquire by subtle means the irresistible bow thy nature was not framed i know it well for speaking falsehood or contriving harm yet since the prize of victory is so dear endure it will be just another day but now for one brief hour devote thyself to serve me without shame and then for a hereafter be the pearl of righteousness neoptolemus the thing that being named revolts mine ear son of laertes i abhor to do tis not my nature no nor as they tell my fathers to work aught by craft and guile i'll undertake to bring him in by force not by deceit for sure with his one foot he cannot be a match for all our crew being sent my lord to serve thee i am loath to be called traitor but i rather choose to offend with honour than to win by wrong odysseus son of a valiant sire i too in youth had once a slow tongue and an active hand but since i have proved the world i clearly see words and not deeds are masters among men neoptolemus what then is thy command to lie no more odysseus to entangle philoctetes with deceit neoptolemus why through deceit may not persuasion fetch him odysseus never and force as certainly will fail neoptolemus what lends him such assurance of defence odysseus arrows the unerring harbingers of death neoptolemus then to go near him is a perilous thing odysseus unless with subtlety as i have said neoptolemus and is not lying shameful to thy soul odysseus not if by lying i can save my soul neoptolemus how must one look in speaking such a word odysseus where gain invites this shrinking is not good neoptolemus what gain i through his coming back to troy odysseus his arms alone have power to take troy town neoptolemus then am not i the spoiler as ye said odysseus thou without them they without thee are powerless neoptolemus if it be so they must be sought and won odysseus yea for in this two prizes will be thine neoptolemus what when i learn them i will not refuse odysseus wisdom and valour joined in one good name neoptolemus shame to the winds come i will do this thing odysseus say dost thou bear my bidding full in mind neoptolemus doubt not since once for all i have embraced it odysseus thou then await him here i will retire for fear my hated presence should be known and take back our attendant to the ship and then once more should ye appear to waste the time unduly i will send again the same man hither in disguise transformed to the strange semblance of a merchant man from dark suggestion of whose crafty tongue thou o my son shall gather timely counsel now to my ship this charge i leave to thee 
may secret hermes guide us to our end and civic pallas named of victory constant protectress of my devious way chorus entering strophe one strange in the stranger land what shall i speak what hide from a heart suspicious of ill tell me o master mine wise above all is the man peerless in searching thought who with the zeus given wand wieldeth a heaven-sent power this unto thee dear son fraught with ancestral might this to thy life hath come wherefore i bid thee declare what must i do for thy need neoptolemus even now methinks thou longest to espy near ocean's marge the place where he doth lie gaze without fear but when the traveller stern who from this roof is parted shall return advancing still as i the signal give to serve each moment's mission thou shalt strive antistrophe one chorus that o my son from of old hath been my care to take note what by thy beckoning is told still thy success to promote but for our errand to-day behooves thee master to say where is the hearth of his home or where even now doth he roam o oh, tell me lest all unaware he spring like a wolf from his lair and i by surprise should be tain where doth he move or remain here lodging or wandering away neoptolemus thou seest yon double doorway of his cell poor habitation of the rock chorus two but tell where is the pain-worn wight himself abroad neoptolemus to me tis clear that in his quest for food here not far off he trails yon furrowed path for so tis told this mode the sufferer hath of sustenance o hardness bringing low wild creatures with winged arrows from his bow nor findeth healer for his troublous woe strophe two chorus i feel his misery with no companion i far from all human care he pines with fell disease each want he hourly sees awakening new despair how can he bear it still o cruel heavens o pain of that afflicted mortal train whose life sharp sorrows fill antistrophe two born in a princely hall highest perchance of all now lies he comfortless alone in deep distress mongst rough and dappled brutes with pangs and hunger worn while from far distant shoots on airy pinion born the unbridled echo still replying to his most bitter crying neoptolemus at naught of this i marvel for if i judge rightly there assailed him from on high that former plague through chrysa's cruel sting and if to-day he suffer anything with none to soothe it must be from the will of some great god so caring to fulfil the word of prophecy lest he should bend on troy the shaft no mortal may forfend before the arrival of troy's destined hour when she must fall or mastered by their power chorus one hush my son neoptolemus why so chorus one a sound fostered of some mortal woe started from the neighbouring ground here or there ah now i know hark tis the voice of one in pain moving hardly the deep strain of human anguish all too clear that strikes my heart that wounds mine ear chorus two from far it peals but thou my son neoptolemus what chorus two think again he cometh nigh he holds the region not with tone of piping shepherd's rural minstrelsy but belloweth his far cry stumbling perchance with mortal pain or else in wild amaze as he our ship surveys unwanted on the inhospitable main enter philoctetes philoctetes ho what men are ye that to this desert shore harbourless uninhabited are come on shipboard of what country or what race shall i pronounce ye for your outward garb is grecian ever dearest to this heart that hungers now to hear your voices tune ah do not fear me do not shrink away from my wild looks but pitying one so poor forlorn and desolate in nameless woe speak if with friendly purpose ye are come o oh, answer tis not meet that i should lose this kindness from your lips or ye from mine neoptolemus then know this first o stranger as thou wouldest that we are greeks philoctetes o oh, dear dear name ah me 
in all these years once only once i hear it my son what fairest gale hath wafted thee what need hath brought thee to the shore what mission declare all this that i may know thee well neoptolemus the sea-girt skiros is my native home thitherward i make voyage achilles son named neoptolemus i have told thee all philoctetes dear is that shore to me dear is thy father o ancient lycomedes foster child whence camest thou hither how didst thou set forth neoptolemus from troy we made our course in sailing hither philoctetes how sure thou wast not with us when at first we launched our vessels on the troyward way neoptolemus hadst thou a share in that adventurous toil philoctetes and know'st thou not whom thou behold'st in me young boy neoptolemus how should i know him whom i ne'er set eye on philoctetes hast not even heard my name nor sounding rumour of my ruinous woe neoptolemus nay i know naught of all thy questioning philoctetes how full of griefs am i how heaven abhorred when of my piteous state now lightest hint hath reached my home or any grecian land but they who pitilessly cast me forth keep silence and are glad while this my plague blooms ever and is strengthened more and more boy great achilles offspring in this form thou seest the man of whom methinks erewhile thou hast been told to whom the herculean bow descended philoctetes poeus son whom the two generals and the ithacan king cast out thus shamefully forlorn afflicted with a fierce malady and desperate wound made by the cruel basilisk's murderous tooth with this for company they left me child exposed upon this shore deserted lone from seaward Crisa came they with their fleet and touched at lemnos i had fallen to rest from the long tossing in a shadowy cave on yonder cliff by the shore gladly they saw and left me having set forth for my need poor man some scanty rags and a thin store of provender such food be theirs i pray imagine o oh my son when they were gone what wakening what arising then was mine what weeping what lamenting of my woe when i beheld the ships wherewith i sailed gone one and all and no man in the place none to bestead me none to comfort me in my sore sickness and where'er i looked naught but distress was present with me still no lack of that for one thing ah my son time passed and there i found myself alone within my narrow lodging forced to serve each pressing need for body's sustenance this bow supplied me with sufficient store wounding the feathered doves and when the shaft from the tight string had struck myself i me dragging this foot would crawl to my swift prey then water must be fetched and in sharp frost wood must be found and broken all by me nor would fire come unbidden but with flint from flint striking dim sparks i hammered forth the struggling flame that keeps the life in me for house-room with the single help of fire gives all i need save healing for my wound now learn my son the nature of this isle no mariner puts in here willingly for it hath neither moorage nor seaport for traffic or kind shelter or good cheer not hitherward do prudent men make voyage perchance one may have touched against his will many strange things may happen in long time these when they come in words have pitied me and given me food or raiment in compassion but none is willing when i speak thereof to take me safely home wherefore i pine now this tenth year in famine and distress feeding the hunger of my ravenous plague such deeds my son the atreidae and the might of wise odysseus have performed on me wherefore may all the olympian gods one day plague them with sharp requital for my wrong chorus methinks my feeling for thee poeus child is like that of thy former visitants neoptolemus i too a witness to confirm his words know them for verities since i have found the atreidae and odysseus evil men philoctetes art thou too wroth with the all pestilent sons of atreus have they given thee cause to grieve neoptolemus would that my hand might ease the wrath i feel 
then sparta and mycenae should beware that kiros too breeds valiant sons for war philoctetes brave youth i love thee tell me the great cause why thou inveighest against them with such heat neoptolemus o son of poeas hardly shall i tell what outrage i endured when i had come yet i will speak it when the fate of death o'ertook achilles philoctetes out alas no more hold till thou first hast made me clearly know is peleus offspring dead neoptolemus alas he is slain by no mortal felled by phoebus shaft so men reported philoctetes well right princely was he and princely is he who slew him shall i mourn him first or wait till i have heard thy tale neoptolemus methinks thou hast thyself enough to mourn without the burden of another's woe philoctetes well spoken then renew thine own complaint and tell once more wherein they insulted thee neoptolemus there came to fetch me in a gallant ship odysseus and the fosterer of my sire saying whether soothly or in idle show that since my father perished it was known none else but i should take troy's citadel such words from them my friend thou mayst believe held me not long from making voyage with speed chiefly through longing for my father's course to see him yet unburied for i ne'er had seen him then besides twas a fair cause if by my going i should conquer troy one day i had sailed and on the second came to sad sigeum with wind-favoured speed when straightway all the hosts surrounding me as i set foot on shore saluted me and swore the dead achilles was in life their eyes being witness when they looked on me he lay there in his shroud but i unhappy soon ending lamentation for the dead went near to those atriadae as to friends to obtain my father's armour and all else that had been his and then alas the while that men should be so hard they spake this word seed of achilles thou mayst freely take all else thy father owned but for those arms another wields them now laertes son tears rushed into mine eyes and in hot wrath i straightway rose and bitterly outspake o miscreant what and have ye dared to give mine arms to some man else unknown to me then said odysseus for he chanced to be near yea child and justly had they given me these i saved them and their master in the field then in fierce anger all at once i launched all terms of execration at his head bating no word being maddened by the thought that i should lose this heirloom and to him he at this pass though not of wrathful mood stung by such utterance made rejoinder thus thou wast not with us here but wrongfully didst bide afar and since thou makest so bold i tell thee never shalt thou as thou sayest sail with these arms to skiros thus reviled with such an evil echo in mine ear i voyage homeward robbed of mine own right by that vile offset of an evil tree yet less i blame him than the men in power for every multitude be it army or state takes tone from those who rule it and all taint of disobedience from bad counsel springs i have spoken may the atreides enemy be dear to heaven as he is loved by me strophe chorus mother of mightiest zeus feeder of all that live who from thy mountainous breast rivers of gold dost give o thee o earth i cried that shameful day when insolence from atreus sons went forth full on our lord when they bestowed away his father's arms to crown odysseus worth thou whom bull-slaughtering lions yoked bear o mighty mother hear philoctetes your coming is commended by a grief that makes you kindly welcome for i feel a chord that vibrates to your voice and tells thus have odysseus in the atreidae wrought full well i know odysseus poisoned tongue shrinks from no mischief nor no guileful word that leads to bad achievement in the end this moves not my main marvel but if one saw this and bore it ajax the elder-born neoptolemus ah friend he was no more had he but lived this robbery had ne'er been wrought on me philoctetes what 
is he too departed neoptolemus he is dead the light no more beholds him philoctetes oh alas but tidious offspring and the rascal birth laertes bought of sisyphus they live i know it for their death were to be wished neoptolemus yea be assured they live and flourish high exalted in the host of argive men philoctetes and nestor my old friend good aged man is he yet living oft he would prevent their evils by the wisdom of his thought neoptolemus he too is now in trouble having lost antilochus the comfort of his age philoctetes there there in one brief word thou hast revealed the mournful case of twain whom i would last have chosen to hear of as undone ah me where must one look when these are dead and he odysseus lives and in a time like this that craves their presence and his death for theirs neoptolemus he wrestles cleverly but oh my friend even clever wits are oft-times snared at last philoctetes tell me i pray what was become of him patroclus whom thy father loved so well neoptolemus he too was gone i'll teach thee in a word one truth for all war doth not willingly snatch off the wicked but still takes the good philoctetes true and to prove thy saying i will inquire the fate of a poor dastard of mean worth but ever shrewd and nimble with his tongue neoptolemus whom but odysseus canst thou mean by this philoctetes i meant not him but there was one thersites who ne'er made conscience to stint speech where all cried silence is he living dost thou know neoptolemus i saw him not but knew he was alive philoctetes he must be for no evil yet was crushed the heavens will ever shield it tis their sport to turn back all things rancorous and malign from going down to the grave and send instead the good and true oh how shall we commend such dealings how defend them when i praise things godlike i find evil in the gods neoptolemus i o oh thou child of a trachinian sire henceforth will take good care from far away to look on troy and atreus children twain yea where the worst man lords it o'er the just and goodness languishes and rascals rule such courses i will never more endure but rock-bound skiros henceforth shall suffice to yield me full contentment in my home now to my vessel and thou poeus child farewell right heartily farewell may heaven grant thy desire and rid thee of thy plague let us be going that when god shall give fair voyage that moment we may launch away philoctetes my son are ye now setting forth neoptolemus our time bids us go near and look to sail ere long philoctetes now by thy father by thy mother nay by all thy love ere cherished in thy home suppliant i beg thee leave me not thus lone forlorn in all my misery which thou seest in all thou hast heard of here surrounding me stow me with other freightage full of care i know and burdensome the charge may prove yet venture surely to the noble mind all shame is hateful and all kindness blessed and shame would be thy meed didst thou fail here but doing this thou shalt have glorious fame when i return alive to eta's vale come tis the labour not of one whole day so thou durst take me fling me where thou wilt o the ship in hold prow stern or wheresoe'er i least may trouble those on board with me ah by great zeus the suppliant's friend comply my son be softened see where i am fallen thus on my knees before thee though so weak crippled and powerless ah forsake me not thus far from human footstep take me take me if only to thy home or to the town of old chalcodon in euboea from thence i have not far to eta and the ridge of trachis and spercaeus lordly flood so thou shalt bless my father with my sight and yet long since i fear he may be gone for oft i sent him suppliant prayers by men who touched this isle entreating him to fetch and bear me safely home with his own crew but either he is dead or else methinks it well may be my messengers made light of my concerns and hastened onward home 
but now in thee i find both messenger and convoy thou wilt pity me and save for well thou knowest danger never sleeps and fear of dark reverse is always nigh mortals when free should look where mischief lurks and in their happiest hour consider well their life lest ruin unsuspected come end of part one recording by expatriate in bangor maine part two of philoctetes by sophocles translated by lewis campbell eighteen thirty to nineteen o eight this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by expatriate in bangor maine part two antistrophe chorus pity him o my king many a crushing woe he telleth such as i pray none of my friends may know and if dear master thou mislikest sore yon cruel-hearted lordly pair i would turning their plan of evil to his good on swift ship bear him to his native shore meeting his heart's desire and free thy path from fear of heavenly wrath neoptolemus thou makes small scruple here but be advised lest when this plague on board shall weary thee thy voice should alter from this liberal tone chorus no truly fear not thou shalt ever have just cause to utter such reproof toward me neoptolemus then sure twere shame should i more backward prove than thou to labour for the stranger's need come if thou wilt let us make voyage and he let him set forth with speed our ship shall take him he shall not be refused only may heaven lead safely hence and to our destined port philoctetes o morning full of brightness kindest friend sweet mariners how can i make you feel and act how dearly from my heart i love you ye have won my soul let us be gone my son first having said farewell to this poor cave my homeless dwelling-place that thou mayst know how barely i have lived how firm my heart methinks another could not have endured the very sight of what i bore but i through strong necessity have conquered pain chorus stay let us understand there come two men a stranger with a shipmate of thy crew when ye have heard them ye may then go in enter messenger disguised as a merchantman merchantman son of achilles my companion here who with two more remain to guard thy ship agreed to help me find thee where thou wert since unexpectedly through fortune's will i meet thee mooring by the selfsame shore for like a merchantman with no great sail making my course from ilion to my home great clustered paparathos when i heard the mariners declare that one and all were of thy crew i would not launch again without a word till we had told our news methinks thou knowest naught of thine own case what new devices of the argive chiefs surround thee nor devices only now but active deeds no longer unperformed neoptolemus well stranger for the kindness thou hast shown else were i base my heart must thank thee still but tell me what thou meanest that i may learn what new laid plot thou bringst me from the camp merchantman old phoenix achamas and demophon are gone in thy pursuit with ships and men neoptolemus to bring me back with reasons or perforce merchantman i know not what i heard i am here to tell neoptolemus how and is this in act are they set forth to please the atreidae phoenix and the rest merchantman the thing is not to do but doing now neoptolemus what kept odysseus back if this be so from going himself had he some cause for fear merchantman he and the son of tydeus when our ship hoist sail were gone to fetch another man neoptolemus for whom could he himself be sailing forth merchantman for some one but first tell me whispering low whate'er thou speakest who is this i see neoptolemus speaking aloud this sir is philoctetes the renowned merchantman aside to neoptolemus without more question snatch thyself away and sail forth from this land philoctetes what saith he boy through what dark traffic is the mariner betraying me with whispering in thine ear neoptolemus i have not caught it but whate'er he speaks he 
he must speak openly to us and thee merchant man seed of achilles let me not offend the army by my words full many a boon being poor i reap from them for service done neoptolemus the atreidae are my foes the man you see is my fast friend because he hates them sore then if you come as friendly you must hide nothing from him or me of all thou hast heard merchant man look what thou doest my son neoptolemus i mark it well merchant man thou shalt be answerable neoptolemus content but speak merchant man then hear me these two men whom i have named diomedes and odysseus are set forth engaged on oath to bring this man by force if reasons fail the achaeans every one have heard this plainly from odysseus mouth he was the louder and more confident neoptolemus say for what cause after so long a time can atreus sons have turned their thoughts on him whom long they had cast forth what passing touch of conscience moved them or what stroke from heaven whose wrath requites all wicked deeds of men merchant man methinks thou hast not heard what i will now unfold to thee there was a princely seer a son of priam helenus by name whom he for whom no word is bad enough crafty odysseus sallying forth alone one night had taken and in bonds displayed for all the achaeans a right noble prey he mid his other prophecies foretold no grecian force should sack troy's citadel till with fair reasons they had brought this man from lemnos isle his lonely dwelling-place when thus the prophet spake laertes son straight undertook to bring and show this man to all the camp he hoped with fair consent but else perforce and if he failed in this whoever would might smite him on the head my tale is told dear youth i counsel speed to thee and to the man for whom thou carest philoctetes ah oh, me unhappy has that rascal knave sworn to fetch me with reasons to their camp as likely might his reasons bring me back like his begetter from the house of death merchant man you talk of what i know not i will go shipward may god be with you for all good exit philoctetes is not this terrible laertes son should ever think to bring me with soft words and show me from his deck to all their host no sooner will i listen to the tongue of the cursed basilisk that thus hath maimed me ay but he'll venture anything in word or deed and now i know he will be here come o my son let us be gone while seas and winds divide us from odysseus ship let us depart sure timely haste brings rest and quiet slumber when the toil is done neoptolemus shall we not sail when this southwestern wind hath fallen that now is adverse to our course philoctetes all winds are fair to him who flies from woe neoptolemus nay but this head-wind hinders them no less philoctetes no head-wind hinders pirates on their way when violence and rapine lead them on neoptolemus well then let us be going if you will when you have taken from within the cave what most you need in value philoctetes though my all be little there is that i may not lose neoptolemus what can there be that we have not on board philoctetes a leaf i have found wherewith i still the rage of my sore plague and lull it quite to rest neoptolemus well bring it forth what is there something more philoctetes if any of these arrows here are fallen i would not leave them for a casual prey neoptolemus how do i see thee with the marvellous bow philoctetes here in my hand the world hath only one neoptolemus and may one touch and handle it and gaze with reverence as on a thing from heaven philoctetes thou mayest my son this and what e'er of mine may stead thee tis thy privilege to enjoy neoptolemus in very truth i long for it but so that longing waits on leave am i permitted philoctetes thou art my son and well thou speakest thou art thou that hast given me life and light the joy of seeing mount eta in my father's home with all i love there and his aged head thou that hast raised me far above my foes who triumph 
thou mayst take it in thine hand and when thou hast given it back to me mayst vaunt alone of mortals for thine excellence to have held this in thy touch i too at first received it as a boon for kindness done neoptolemus well go within philoctetes nay i must take thee too my sickness craves thee for its comforter philoctetes and neoptolemus go into the cave chorus strophe one in fable i have heard though sight hath ne'er confirmed the word how he who attempted once the couch supreme to a whirling wheel by zeus the all-ruler bound tied head and heel careering ever round atones his impious unsubstantial dream of no man else through eye or ear have i discerned a fate more full of fear than yonder sufferers of the cureless wound who did no violence defrauded none a just man had he dwelt among the just unworthily behold him thrust alone to hear the billows roar that break around a rugged shore how could he live whose life was thus consumed with moan antistrophe one where neighbour there was none no arm to stay him wandering lone unevenly with stumbling steps and sore no friend in need no kind inhabitant to minister to his importunate want no heart whereto his pangs he might deplore none who when e'er the gory flow was rushing hot might healing herbs bestow or cull from teeming earth some genial plant to allay the anguish of malignant pain and soothe the sharpness of his poignant woe like infant whom the nurse lets go with wriggling movement here and there he crawled for comfort when so e'er his soul devouring plague relaxed his cruel strain strophe two not fed with foison of all teeming earth whence we sustain us ever toiling men but only now and then with winged things by his winged shafts brought low he stayed his hunger from his bow poor soul that never through ten years of dearth had pleasure from the fruitage of the vine but seeking to some standing pool nor clear nor cool foul water heaved to head for lack of heartening wine antistrophe two but now consorted with the hero's child he winneth greatness and a joyful change over the water wild borne by a friendly bark beneath the range of ita where spercaeus fills wide channels winding among lovely hills haunted of melian nymphs till he espies the roof-tree of his father's hall and high o'er all shines the bronze shield of him whose home is in the skies neoptolemus comes out of the cave followed by philoctetes in pain neoptolemus prithee come on why dost thou stand aghast voiceless and thus astonied in thine air philoctetes oh oh neoptolemus what philoctetes nothing come my son fear not neoptolemus is pain upon thee hast thy trouble come philoctetes no pain no pain tis past i am easy now ye heavenly powers neoptolemus why dost thou groan aloud and cry to heaven philoctetes to come and save kind heaven oh oh neoptolemus what is it why silent wilt not speak i see thy misery philoctetes oh i am lost my son i cannot hide it from you oh it shoots it pierces oh unhappy oh my woe i am lost my son i am devoured oh me oh 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 pain pain oh pain oh pain child if a sword be to thine hand smite hard shear off my foot heed not my life quick come neoptolemus what hath so suddenly arisen that thus thou makest a do and groanest o'er thyself philoctetes thou knowest neoptolemus what know i philoctetes o thou knowest my son neoptolemus i know not philoctetes how not know ah me pain pain neoptolemus thy plague is a sore burden heavy and sore philoctetes sore tis unutterable have pity on me neoptolemus what shall i do philoctetes do not in fear forsake me 
this wandering evil comes in force again hungry as ere it fed neoptolemus o happy one thrice hapless in thy manifold distress what wilt thou shall i raise thee on mine arm philoctetes nay but receiving from my hand the bow as late thou didst desire me keep it safe and guard it till the fury of my pain pass over me and cease for when tis spent slumber will seize me else it ne'er would end i must sleep undisturbed but if meanwhile they come by heaven i charge thee in no wise willingly nor perforce let them have this else thou wilt be the slayer of us both of me thy suppliant and of thyself neoptolemus fear not my care no hand shall hold these arms but thine and mine give and heaven bless the deed philoctetes i give them there my son but look to heaven and pray no envy smite thee nor such bane in having them as fell on me and him who bore them formerly neoptolemus o oh, grant it gods and grant us fair and happy voyage where'er our course is shaped and righteous heaven shall guide philoctetes ah but i fear my son thy prayer is vain for welling yet again from depths within this gory ooze is dripping it will come i know it will o oh, foot torn helpless thing what wilt thou do to me ah ah it comes it is at hand tis here woe's me undone i have shown you all stay near me go not far ah ah oh island king i would this agony might cleave thy bosom through and through woe 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 ah ye two commanders of the host agamemnon menelaus oh that ye another ten years durance in my room might nurse this malady o oh, death 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 i call thee daily wilt thou never come will it not be my son thou noble boy if thou art noble take and burn me there aloft in yon all-worshipped lemnian fire yea when the bow thou keep'st was my reward i did like service for the child of heaven how now my son what say'st art silent where where art thou boy neoptolemus my heart is full and groaning o'er thy woes philoctetes nay yet have comfort this affliction oft goes no less swiftly than it came i pray thee stand fast and leave me not alone neoptolemus fear not we will not stir philoctetes wilt thou remain neoptolemus be sure of it philoctetes i'll not degrade thee with an oath my son neoptolemus rest satisfied i may not go without thee philoctetes thy hand to pledge me that neoptolemus there i will stay philoctetes now now aloft neoptolemus where meanst thou philoctetes yonder aloft neoptolemus whither thou ravest why starest thou at the sky philoctetes now let me go neoptolemus where philoctetes let me go i say neoptolemus i will not philoctetes you will kill me let me go neoptolemus well thou knowest best i hold thee not philoctetes o earth i die receive me to thy breast this pain subdues me utterly i cannot stand neoptolemus methinks he will be fast in slumber soon that head sinks backward and a clammy sweat bathes all his limbs while from his foot hath burst a vein dark bleeding let us leave him friends in quietness till he hath fallen to sleep chorus strophe lord of the happiest life sleep thou that know'st not strife that know'st not grief still wafting sure relief come saviour now thy healing balm is spread over this pain-worn head quench not the light that gives calm to his brow look o my lord to thy path either to go or to stay how is my thought to proceed what is our cause for delay look opportunity's power fitting the task to the hour giveth the race to the swift neoptolemus he hears not but i see that to obtain his bow without him were a bootless gain he must sail with us so the god hath said heaven hath decreed this garland for his head and to have failed with falsehood were a meed of shameful soyer for a shameless deed 
antistrophe chorus god shall determine the end but for thine answer friend waft soft words low all sick men's sleep we know hath open eye their quickly ruffling mind quivers in lightest wind sleepless in slumber new danger to spy think o my lord of thy path secret look forth afar what wilt thou do for thy need how with the wise wilt thou care if toward the nameless thy heart chooseth this merciful part huge are the dangers that drift the wind is fair my son the wind is fair the man is dark and helpless stretched in night o kind warm sleep that calmest human care powerless of hand and foot and ear and sight blind as one lying in the house of death think well if here thou utterest timely breath this o my son is all my thought can find best are the toils that without frightening bind neoptolemus hush one word more were madness he revives his eye hath motion he uplifts his head philoctetes fair daylight following sleep and ye dear friends faithful beyond all hope in tending me i never could have dreamed that thou dear youth couldst thus have borne my sufferings and stood near so full of pity to relieve my pain not so the worthy generals of the host this princely patience was not theirs to show only thy noble nature nobly sprung made light of all the trouble though oppressed with fetid odours and unceasing cries and now since this my plague would seem to yield some pause and brief forgetfulness of pain with thine own hand my son upraise me here and set me on my feet that when my strength after exhaustion shall return again we may move shoreward and launch forth with speed neoptolemus i feel unhoped-for gladness when i see thy painless gaze and hear thy living breath for thine appearance and surroundings both were death-like but arise or if thou wilt these men shall raise thee for they will not shrink from toil which thou and i at once enjoin philoctetes right right my son but lift me thine own self as i am sure thou meanest let these be lest they be burdened with the noisome smell before the time enough for them to bear the trouble on board neoptolemus i will stand up endure philoctetes fear not old habit will enable me neoptolemus o oh, me what shall i do now tis my turn to exclaim philoctetes what can the matter be what change is here my son neoptolemus i know not how to shift the word tis hopeless philoctetes what is hopeless speak not so dear child neoptolemus but so my wretched lot hath fallen philoctetes ah can it be the offence of my disease hath moved thee not to take me now on board neoptolemus all is offence to one who hath forced himself from the true bent to an unbecoming deed philoctetes not misbecoming to thyself or sire doest thou or speak'st befriending a good man neoptolemus my baseness will appear that rings my soul philoctetes not in thy deeds but for thy words i fear me neoptolemus o oh, heaven must double vileness then be mine both shameful silence and most shameful speech philoctetes or my discernment is at fault or thou meanst to betray me and make voyage without me neoptolemus nay not without thee there is my distress lest i convey thee to thy bitter grief philoctetes how how dear son i do not comprehend neoptolemus here i unveil it thou art to sail to troy to join the chieftains in the achaean host philoctetes what do i hear ah neoptolemus grieve not till you learn philoctetes learn what what wilt thou make of me what meanst thou neoptolemus first to release thee from this plague and then with thee to go and take the realm of troy philoctetes and is this thine intent neoptolemus tis so ordained unchangeably be not dismayed tis so philoctetes me miserable i am betrayed undone what guile is here my bow give back my bow neoptolemus i may not 
interest and duty too force me to obey commandment philoctetes o thou fire thou terror of the world dark instrument of ever hateful guile what hast thou done how thou hast cheated me art not ashamed to look on him that sued to thee for shelter o heart of stone thou hast stolen my life away with yonder bow ah yet i beg of thee give it me back my son i entreat thee give by all thy father worshipped rob me not of life ah me now he will speak no more but turns away obdurate to return it o oh, ye my comrades in this wilderness rude creatures of the rocks o oh, promontories creeks precipices of the hills to you and your familiar presence i complain of this foul trespass of achilles son sworn to convey me home to troy he bears me and under pledge of his right hand hath ta'en and holds from me perforce my wondrous bow the sacred gift of zeus-born heracles thinking to wave it midst the achaean host triumphantly for his in conquering me he vaunts as of some valorous feat and knows not he is spoiling a mere course an empty dream the shadow of a vapour in my strength he ne'er had vanquished me even as i am he could not but by guile now all forlorn i am abused deceived what must i do nay give it me nay yet be thy true self thou art silent i am lost o misery rude face of rock back i return to thee and thy twin gateway robbed of arms and food to wither in thy cave companionless no more with these mine arrows to destroy or flying bird or mountain roving beast but all unhappy i myself must be the feast of those on whom i fed the chase of that i hunted and shall dearly pay in bloody quittance for their death through one who seemed all ignorant of sinful guile perish not till i am certain if thy heart will change once more if not my curse on thee chorus what shall we do my lord we wait thy word or to sail now or yield to his desire neoptolemus my heart is pressed with a strange pity for him not now beginning but long since begun philoctetes i pity me my son by all above make not thy name a scorn by wronging me neoptolemus oh i am troubled sore what must i do would i had never left mine island home philoctetes thou art not base but seemest to have learnt some baseness from base men now as tis meet be better guided leave me mine arms and go neoptolemus to chorus what shall we do enter odysseus odysseus what art thou doing knave give me that bow and haste thee back again philoctetes alas what do i hear odysseus voice odysseus be sure of that odysseus whom thou seest philoctetes oh i am bought and sold undone twas he that kidnapped me and robbed me of my bow odysseus yea i deny it not be sure twas i philoctetes give back my son the bow release it odysseus that though he desire it he shall never do thou too shalt march along or these shall force thee philoctetes they force me o thou boldest of bad men they force me odysseus if thou comest not willingly philoctetes o lemnian earth and thou almighty flame hephaestus workmanship shall this be born that he by force must drag me from your care odysseus tis zeus i tell thee monarch of this isle who thus hath willed i am his minister philoctetes wretch what vile words thy wit hath power to say the gods are liars when invoked by thee odysseus nay tis their truth compels thee to this voyage philoctetes i will not have it so odysseus i will thou shalt philoctetes woe for my wretchedness my father then begat no freeman but a slave in me odysseus nay but the peer of noblest men with whom thou art to take and ravage troy with might philoctetes never though i must suffer direst woe while this steep lemnian ground is mine to tread odysseus 
what now is thine intent philoctetes down from the crag this head shall plunge and stain the crag beneath odysseus ay seize and bind him baffle him in this end of part two recording by expatriate in bangor maine part three of philoctetes by sophocles translated by lewis campbell eighteen thirty to nineteen o eight this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by expatriate in bangor maine part three odysseus i seize and bind him baffle him in this philoctetes poor hands for lack of your beloved string caught by this craven o corrupted soul how thou hast undermined me having taken to screen thy quest this youth to me unknown far worthier of my friendship than of thine who knew no better than to obey command even now tis manifest he burns within with pain for his own error and my wrong but though unwilling and inapt for ill thy crafty mean and cranny spying soul too well hath lessened him in sinful lore now thou hast bound me o thou wretch and thinkest to take me from this coast where thou didst cast me outlawed and desolate a corpse among men oh i curse thee now as oft times in the past but since heaven yields me naught but bitterness thou livest and art blithe while tis my pain to live on in my misery laughed to scorn by thee and atreus sons those generals twain whom thou art serving in this chase but thou with strong compulsion and deceit was driven troyward whilst i poor victim of free will took my seven ships and sailed there yet was thrown far from all honour as thou sayest by them but as they turn the tale by thee and now why fetch me hence and take me to what end i am nothing dead to you this many a year how o thou heaven abhorred am i not now lame and of evil smell how shall ye vaunt before the gods drink offering or the fat of victims if i sail among your crew for this as ye professed was the chief cause why ye disowned me perish so ye shall for the wrong done me if the heavens be just and that they are i know else had ye ne'er sailed on this errand for an outcast wretch had they not pricked your heart with thoughts of me oh if ye pity me chastising powers and thou the genius of my land revenge revenge this crime on all their heads at once my life is pitiable but if i saw their ruin i would think me well and strong chorus how full of bitterness is his resolve sullenly spoken with unbending will odysseus i might speak long in answer did the time give scope but now one thing is mine to say i am known to vary with the varying need and when tis tried who can be just and good my peer will not be found for piety but though on all occasions covetous of victory this once i yield to thee and willingly unhand him there let go leave him to stay what further use of thee when we have tamed these arms have we not teucer skilled in this mystery yea i may boast myself thine equal both in strength and aim to wield them fare thee well then thou art free to roam thy barren isle we need thee not let us be going and perchance thy gift may bring thy destined glory to my brow philoctetes what shall i do alas shalt thou be seen graced with mine arms amongst achaean men odysseus no more i am going philoctetes o oh, achilles child wilt thou too vanish must i lose thy voice odysseus come on and look not noble though thou be lest thou undo our fortune philoctetes mariners must ye too lead me thus disconsolate will ye not pity me chorus our captain's here whate'er he saith to thee that we too speak neoptolemus my chief will call me weakling soft of heart but go not yet since our friend bids you stay till we have prayed and all be ready on board meanwhile perchance he may conceive some thought that favours our design we too will start and ye be swift to speed forth at our call exit monody strophe one philoctetes 
o cavern of the hollow rock frosty and stifling in the seasons change how i seem fated never more to range from thy sad covert that hath felt a shock of pain on pain steeped with my wretchedness now thou wilt be my comforter in death grief haunted harbour choked with my distress tell me what hope is mine of daily food who will be careful for my good i fail ye cowering creatures of the sky oh as ye fly snatch me borne upward on the blast sharp breath chorus one thou child of misery no mightier power hath this decreed but thine own will indeed hath bound thee thus in grief since when kind heaven had sent relief and shown the path of wisdom firm and sure thou still hast chosen this evil to endure antistrophe one philoctetes o hapless life sore bruised with pain no more with living mortal may i dwell but ever pining in this desert cell with lonely grief all famished must remain and perish for what food is mine to share when this strong arm no longer wields my bow whose fleet shafts flew to smite the birds of air i was o'erthrown by words words dark and blind low creeping from a traitorous mind oh might i see him whose unrighteous thought this ruin wrought plagued for no less a period with like woe chorus two not by our craft thou art caught but destiny divine hath wrought the net that holds thee bound aim not at us the sound of thy dread curse with dire disaster fraught on others let that light tis our true care thou shouldst not scorn our love in thy despair strophe two philoctetes now seated by the shore of heaving ocean hoar he mocks me waving high the sole support of my precarious being the bow which none e'er held but i o oh, treasure of my heart torn from this hand that loved thy touch if thou canst understand how sad must be thy look in seeing thy master destined now no more like heracles of yore to wield thee with an archer's might but in the grasp of an all scheming wight o oh, bitter change thou art plied and swaying ever by his side shalt view his life of dark malignity teeming with guileful shames like those he wrought on me chorus three nobly to speak for the right is manly and strong but not with an envious blight to envenom the tongue he to serve all his friends of the fleet one obeying a many-voiced word through the ministering craft of our lord hath but done what was meet antistrophe two philoctetes come legions of the wild of aspect fierce or mild foul from the fields of air and beasts that roam with bright untroubled gaze no longer bounding from my lair fly mine approach now freely without fear ye may surround my covert and come near treading the savage rock-strewn ways the might i had is no more mine stolen with those arms divine this fort hath no man to defend can satisfy your vengeful jaws and rend these quivering tainted limbs already hovering death bedims my fainting sense who thus can live on air tasting no gift of earth at breathing mortals share chorus four ah do not shrink from thy friend if love thou reverest but know tis for thee to forfend the fate which thou fearest the lot thou hast here to deplore is sad evermore to maintain and hardship and sickness is sore but sorest in pain epide philoctetes strongest of all that e'er before have trod this shore again thou mind'st me of mine ancient woe why wilt thou ruin me what wouldst thou do chorus five how mean'st thou philoctetes if to troy of me abhorred thou e'er hast hoped to lead me with thy lord chorus six so i judge best philoctetes be gone at once be gone chorus seven sweet is that word and swiftly shall be done let us be gone each to his place on board the chorus make as if they were going philoctetes nay by dear zeus to whom all suppliants moan leave me not yet chorus eight keep measure in thy word philoctetes stay by heaven stay 
chorus nine what wilt thou say philoctetes o misery o cruel power that rules this hour i am destroyed ah me o poor torn limb what shall i do with thee through all my days to be ah strangers come return return chorus ten what new command are we to learn crossing thy former mind philoctetes ah yet be kind reprove not him whose tongue with grief distraught obeys not in dark storms the helm of thought chorus eleven come poor friend the way we call philoctetes never learn it once for all not though he whom heaven obeys blast me with fierce lightning's blaze perish troy and all your host that have chosen to their cost to despise and cast me forth since my plague obscured my worth ah but strangers if your sense hath o'ermastered this offence yield but one thing to my prayer chorus twelve what wouldst thou have philoctetes some weapon bear axe or sword or sharpened dart bring it to content my heart chorus thirteen what is thy new intent philoctetes to sever point by point this body joint from joint on bloody death my mind is bent chorus fourteen wherefore philoctetes to see my father's face chorus fifteen where upon earth philoctetes he hath no place where sun doth shine but in the halls of night o native country land of my delight would i were blessed one moment with thy sight why did i leave thy sacred dew and loose my vessels from thy shore to join the hateful danaean crew and lend them succour oh i am no more leader of chorus long since thou hast seen me nearing yonder ship had i not spied odysseus and the son of great achilles hastening to our side odysseus wilt thou not tell me why thou art hurrying this backward journey with reverted speed neoptolemus to undo what i have wrongly done to-day odysseus thy words appall me what is wrongly done neoptolemus when in obeying thee and all the host odysseus thou didst what deed that misbecame thy life neoptolemus i conquered with base stratagem and fraud odysseus whom what new plan is rising in thy mind neoptolemus not new but to the child of poeus here odysseus what wilt thou do i quake with strange alarm neoptolemus from whom i took these weapons back again odysseus o oh, heaven thou wilt not give them meanst thou this neoptolemus yea for i have them through base sinful means odysseus i pray thee speak'st thou thus to anger me neoptolemus if the truth anger thee the truth is said odysseus achilles son what word is fallen from thee neoptolemus must the same syllables be thrice thrown forth odysseus once was too much would they had ne'er been said neoptolemus enough thou hast heard my purpose clearly told odysseus i know what power shall thwart thee in the deed neoptolemus whose will shall hinder me odysseus the achaean host and i among them neoptolemus thou art sharp-witted sure but little wit or wisdom show'st thou here odysseus neither thy words nor thy design is wise neoptolemus but if tis righteous that is better far odysseus how righteous to release what thou hast tamed by my device neoptolemus i sinned a shameful sin and i will do mine utmost to retrieve it odysseus how fearst thou not the achaeans in this act neoptolemus in doing right i fear not them nor thee odysseus i call thy power in question neoptolemus then i'll fight not with troy's legions but with thee odysseus come on let fortune arbitrate neoptolemus thou seest my hand feeling the hilt odysseus and me thou soon shalt see doing the like and dallying not and yet i will not touch thee but will go and tell the army that shall wreak this on thy head exit neoptolemus 
thou show'st discretion which if thou preserve thou mayst maintain a path exempt from pain ho son of poeus philoctetes come and leave thy habitation in the rock philoctetes what noise again is troubling my poor cave why do ye summon me what crave ye sirs ha tis some knavery are ye come to add some monster evil to my mountainous woe neoptolemus fear not but hearken to what now i speak philoctetes i needs must fear thee whose fair words erewhile brought me to bitter fortune neoptolemus may not men repent and change philoctetes such wast thou in thy talk when thou didst rob me of my bow so bright without so black within neoptolemus ah but not now assure thee only let me hear thy will is't constant to remain here and endure or to make voyage with us philoctetes stop speak no more idle in vain will all thine utterance be neoptolemus thou art so resolved philoctetes more firmly than i say neoptolemus i would i might have brought thee to my mind but since my words are out of tune i have done philoctetes thou wert best no word of thine can touch my soul or win me to thy love who by deceit hath reft my life away and then thou comest to school me of noblest father basest son perish the atreidae first of all and then laertes child and thou neoptolemus curse me no more but take this hallowed weapon from my hand philoctetes what words are these am i again deceived neoptolemus no by the holiest name of zeus on high philoctetes o voice of gladness if thy speech be true neoptolemus the deed shall prove it only reach thy hand and be again sole master of thy bow odysseus appears odysseus but i make protest in the sight of heaven for atreus sons and all the achaean host philoctetes dear son whose voice disturbs us do i hear odysseus odysseus ay and thou behold'st him nigh and he shall force thee to the trojan plain howe'er achilles offspring make or mar philoctetes this shaft shall bear thee sorrow for that boast neoptolemus let it not fly by heaven philoctetes dear child let go mine arm neoptolemus i will not exit odysseus philoctetes ah why hast thou robbed my bow of bringing down mine enemy neoptolemus this were ignoble both for thee and me philoctetes one thing is manifest the first of the host lying forerunners of the achaean band are brave with words but cowards with the steel neoptolemus well now the bow is thine thou hast no cause for blame or anger any more against me philoctetes none thou hast proved thy birthright dearest boy not from the loins of sisyphus thou camest but from achilles who in life was held noblest of men alive and now of the dead neoptolemus it gladdens me that thou should speak in praise both of my sire and me but hear me tell the boon for which i sue thee mortal men must bear such evils as high heaven ordains but those afflicted by self-chosen ills like thine to-day receive not from just men or kind indulgence or compassionate thought and thou art restive grown and wilt not hearken but though one counsel thee with kindest intent will take him for a dark malignant foe yet calling zeus to witness for my soul once more will speak know this and mark it well thou bear'st this sickness by a heavenly doom through coming near to chrysa's sentinel the lurking snake that guards the sky-roofed fold and from this plague thou ne'er shall find reprieve while the same sun-god rears him from the east and droops to west again till thou become of thine own willing mind to troia's plain where our physicians sons of phoebus child shall soothe thee from thy sore and thou with me and with thy bow shall take troy's citadel how do i know this i will tell thee straight we have a trojan captive helenus both prince and prophet who hath clearly told this must be so yea and ere harvest time this year great troy must fall 
else if his words be falsified who will may slay the seer now since thou know'st of this yield thy consent for glorious is the gain being singled forth from all the greeks as noblest first to come to healing hands and then to win renown unrivalled vanquishing all tearful troy philoctetes oh how i hate my life why must it keep this breathing form from sinking to the shades how can i prove a rebel to his mind who thus exhorts me with affectionate heart and yet o oh misery must i give way then how could i endure the light of heaven with whom could i exchange a word i me eyes that have seen each act of my sad life how could ye bear it to behold the sons of atreus who destroyed me comrades now and friends laertes wicked son my friend and less i feel the grief of former wrong than shudder with expectance of fresh harm that yet may work on me for when the mind hath once been mother of an evil brood it nurses naught but evils yea at thee i marvel thou shouldst ne'er return to troy nor suffer me to go when thou rememberest what insult they have done thee ravishing thy father's rights from thee and wilt thou then sail to befriend them pressing me in aid nay do not so son but even as thou hast sworn convey me home and thou in skiros dwelling leave to their evil doom those evil men so thou shalt win a twofold gratitude from me and from my father and not seem helping vile men to be as vile as they neoptolemus tis fairly spoken yet i would that thou relying on my word and on heaven's aid wouldst voyage forth from lemnos with thy friend philoctetes meanst thou to troy and to the hateful sons of atreus me with this distressful limb neoptolemus nay but to those that will relieve the pain of thy torn foot and heal thee of thy plague philoctetes thy words are horrible what meanst thou boy neoptolemus the act i deem the noblest for us both philoctetes wilt thou speak so where is thy fear of heaven neoptolemus why should i fear when i see certain gain philoctetes gain for the sons of atreus or for me neoptolemus methinks a friend should give thee friendly counsel philoctetes friendly to hand me over to my foes neoptolemus ah be not hardened in thy misery philoctetes i know thou wilt ruin me by what thou speakest neoptolemus not i the case is dark to thee i see philoctetes i know the atreidae cast me on this rock neoptolemus but how if they should save thee afterward philoctetes they ne'er shall make me see troy with my will neoptolemus hard is my fortune then if by no slate of reasoning i can draw thee to my mind for me twere easiest to end speech that thou mightst live on as thou livest in hopeless pain philoctetes then lead me to my fate but thou hast touched my right hand with thine own and given consent to bear me to my home do this dear son and do not linger to take thought of troy enough that name hath echoed in my groans neoptolemus if thou wilt let us be going philoctetes nobly hast thou said the word neoptolemus lean thy steps on mine philoctetes as firmly as my foot will strength afford neoptolemus ah but how shall i escape achaean anger philoctetes do not care neoptolemus ah but should they spoil my country philoctetes i to shield thee will be there neoptolemus how to shield me how to aid me philoctetes with the shafts of heracles i will scare them neoptolemus give thy blessing to this isle and come in peace heracles appears from above heracles first son of poeas wait till thou hast heard the voice of heracles and weighed his word him thou beholdest from the heavenly seat come down for thee leaving the blessed retreat to tell thee all high zeus intends and stay thy purpose in the journey of to-day then hear me first how after my long toils 
by strange adventure i have found and won immortal glory which thine eyes perceive and the like lot i tell thee shall be thine after these pains to rise to glorious fame sailing with this thy comrade to troy town first thou shalt heal thee from thy grievous sore and then being singled forth from all the host as noblest thou shalt conquer with that bow paris prime author of these years of harm and capture troy and bear back to thy hall the choicest guerdon for thy valour's meed to eta's vale and thine own father's home but every prize thou takes be sure thou bear unto my pyre in memory of my bow this word achilles offspring is for thee no less for as thou couldst not without him so without thee he cannot conquer troy then like twin lions hunting the same hill guard thou him and he thee and i will send asclepius troyward to relieve thy pain for ilion now a second time must fall before the herculean bow but take good heed midst all your spoil to hold the gods in awe for our great father counteth piety far above all this follows men in death and fails them not when they resign their breath philoctetes thou whom i have longed to see thy dear voice is law to me neoptolemus i obey with gladdened heart heracles lose no time at once depart bright occasion and fair wind urge your vessel from behind philoctetes come let me bless the region ere i go poor house sad comrade of my watch farewell ye nymphs of meadows where soft waters flow thou ocean headland peeling thy deep knell where oft within my cavern as i lay my hair was moist with dashing south wind spray and oft times came from hermes foreland high sad replication of my storm-vexed cry ye fountains and thou lycaean water sweet i never thought to leave you yet my feet are turning from your paths we part for a farewell and waft me kindly on my way o lemnian earth enclosed by circling seas to sail where mighty fate my course decrees and friendly voices point me and the will of that heroic power who doth this act fulfil chorus come now all in one strong band then ere loosing from the land pray we to the nymphs of sea kind protectresses to be till we touch the trojan strand end of part three recording by expatriate in bangor maine end of philoctetes by sophocles translated by lewis campbell eighteen thirty to nineteen o eight